Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry lab video covers a separation of anison components experiment. This is part one, introduction, solubilities, and separation scheme. This is anison. It is an over-the-counter pain medication. It contains aspirin and caffeine as active ingredients. Here's the structure of aspirin and here's the structure of caffeine. It also contains an inactive binding agent that holds the pills together. I'm just going to list that as binding agent. We'll exploit solubility differences between these materials to separate them using a series of extractions. Some experiment prerequisites include having an understanding of atom electronegativities. This is important because it helps with an understanding of bond dipoles and bond polarities. That in turn is important for understanding of molecular dipoles and molecule polarity. This leads to a knowledge of intermolecular forces, in particular van der Waals attractive forces, dipole-dipole attractive forces, and hydrogen bonding. And then a basic understanding of solubility is also important. Some learning objectives are described on this slide. After this experiment, you will be able to describe how a molecule's polarity affects its solubility, describe how molecules with acidic or basic functional groups can exist in neutral or salt forms, and how the solubilities of those forms differ. You will extract compounds from a mixture by solid-liquid extraction and by liquid-liquid extraction. You'll learn how to operate a separatory funnel. You'll learn how to dry organic solutions. You'll filter solid-liquid mixtures. You'll purify a solid by recrystallization. And finally, you'll confirm a solid's identity and purity by measuring its melting point. On this slide, I'm going to take you through some common lab solvents and their properties. I'll start first with water-insoluble solvents. These are solvents that form a separate layer when they're mixed with water. I'll start from the top with the least polar, then move down towards more polar at the bottom. Hexane, xylenes, diethyl ether, and dichloromethane are all solvents that have low solubility in water. They have densities and boiling points that are listed here. Densities are particularly important when you're doing extractions because density controls which layer is on the top or the bottom when you're doing a two-phase liquid extraction. Water has a density of 1.0 grams per milliliter and solvents that are less dense than that will float on water while solvents that are more dense, like dichloromethane, will sink in water. Boiling points will be important when we start heating these solvents. The next class of solvents I'll talk about are the slightly water-soluble solvents. These solvents usually form a separate layer when mixed with water, but it depends on the amount added. These include tetrahydrofuran, also known as THF, and ethyl acetate, also known as ETOAC. If you take a little bit of these solvents and add them to water, they will dissolve. If you add enough of them though, eventually they'll form a separate layer and you'll have a two-phase mixture with water. The densities are included here along with the boiling points. You can see that for these two, the densities are both less than one, so they'll float on top of water. Finally, I've got the water miscible solvents listed next. These are more polar solvents. These solvents form a single layer when mixed with water in all portions. These include acetone, ethanol, water, and then mixtures of water and salts. For example, sodium chloride in water is called brine, saturated NaCl solution in water. And here are their densities and boiling points. We'll be using some of the solvents in this experiment, so refer back to this table whenever you need to know the polarity of a solvent and the density of a solvent or its boiling point. On this slide, I'm going to talk about the acid-base chemistry and solubility of aspirin. The structure of aspirin is shown here on the left. Aspirin is a less polar, water-insoluble compound because although it has some polar functionality on the right side, it also has a benzene ring and a lot of nonpolar functionality on the left, and that dominates the solubility characteristics of this molecule. Aspirin is not very water-soluble. However, when that's mixed in with a weak base, sodium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate can deprotonate the aspirin at its carboxylic acid proton. This is an acidic proton, and a weak base like sodium bicarbonate can abstract it. This changes aspirin from a neutral compound into a water-soluble salt, a sodium salt. This is now a much more polar molecule, and it ends up being water-soluble. This is a way of manipulating the solubility of aspirin. If you want aspirin to be less water-soluble, leave it in its neutral form. If you want it to become water-soluble, deprotonate it and turn it into its salt form. It's possible to go the other way, too. Suppose you have the sodium salt of aspirin and you want to convert it back into its neutral form. The way to do that is to add an acid to reinstall the proton. So here, the sodium salt of aspirin, which is very polar and water-soluble, is treated with HCl. The negatively charged oxygen of the sodium salt grabs a proton off of the HCl and that produces neutral aspirin, which is less polar and water insoluble, along with sodium chloride. Here's a separation scheme that we're going to use to take advantage of that acid-base dependent solubility behavior. We'll start with a mixture of caffeine, aspirin, and the solid binding agent that's present in the analgesic anison. 
We'll take over the counter anise and tablets and we'll grind them up and we will separate the components as follows. We'll extract the solid mixture with ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate is a medium polarity solvent and it's a good match for caffeine and aspirin but it doesn't dissolve the solid binding agent. Then we'll gravity filter off the solid binding agent and we'll be left with an ethyl acetate solution that contains neutral caffeine and neutral aspirin along with the solid binding agent that we'll catch in filter paper. Now we have one of the three components separated, the solid binder is by itself. We'll next need to turn our attention to the ethyl acetate solution to separate the mixture of caffeine and aspirin. This is where we're gonna take advantage of modifying the solubility behavior of aspirin by deprotonating it. So we'll take this solution and extract this ethyl acetate solution with sodium bicarbonate and water. That's the weak base I mentioned on the previous slide. Sodium bicarbonate will abstract a proton off of the aspirin to create an aspirin sodium salt. That will be in a water solution that sits at the bottom because water is more dense than ethyl acetate. The ethyl acetate solution contains neutral caffeine, which has remained unchanged. Then we can take that ethyl acetate solution of caffeine, we can dry that solution with magnesium sulfate to remove water, and then simply evaporate away the solvent to give solid caffeine as one of our three isolated components. Then we can turn our attention to the water solution of aspirin sodium salt and treat that with hydrochloric acid and then filter the resulting precipitate. When we treat that with HCl, the negatively charged oxygen of the sodium salt abstracts a proton off of the H3O+, and that gives neutral aspirin, which is now less polar and won't remain dissolved in the water, so it will precipitate. All we have to do then is filter it. This is how we get our three solid materials out of the anison tablets, solid binding agent, solid caffeine, and solid aspirin. This concludes the first video in the series. Stay tuned for the next video, which covers extractions and filtrations. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.